In the world of commercial aviation, few aircraft have achieved legendary status like the Airbus A380 and the Boeing 747. These engineering marvels not only redefined long-haul travel, but also symbolized the ambitions of two of the world's biggest aircraft manufacturers, Airbus and Boeing. With their massive size, unique designs, and distinct legacies, the A380 and 747 have become icons in their own right. But as the aviation industry shifts toward fuel efficiency and smaller aircraft, one question remains. Which of these giants left a more lasting impact on global aviation? Despite decades of progress in commercial aviation, two aircraft stand above the rest, the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747. With unmatched design and scale, they've become icons of modern flight. As direct rivals in the Airbus versus Boeing battle, these giants share many traits, but their impact on the industry took very different paths. Let's explore five distinct impacts they've had on modern aviation. Often praised as the queen of the skies, the Boeing 747 made an unmatched first impression as the world's first wide-body aircraft featuring a partial second deck. It went on to become the most important commercial passenger jet ever built, capable of carrying over 400 passengers in a typical three-class layout. For many global airlines at the time, the Queen of the Skies fundamentally transformed their business models, allowing them to transport more passengers while flying farther. Later, Airbus introduced a worthy rival, the full double-deck A380, which dethroned the 747 to become the largest passenger aircraft in the world with the ability to carry over 500 passengers in a standard three-class configuration. However, the Boeing 747-8, the final and largest version of the 747, is actually longer than the A380. According to Lufthansa, the 747-8 measures 76.3 meters, or 250.3 feet in length, compared to the A380's 72.73 meters, or 238.6 feet. That said, the A380 has a wider wingspan, 79.8 meters or 261.8 feet, versus 68.4 meters or 224.4 feet for the 747-8. When the first Boeing 747-100 rolled off the production line, it already boasted a significantly extended range compared to competing aircraft. This allowed airlines to operate longer routes while still maximizing passenger capacity. As Boeing continued to refine the aircraft's design and overall performance through larger variants, the 747 became increasingly capable. With the introduction of more fuel-efficient next-generation engines, it evolved into a versatile workhorse, especially valuable for long-haul intercontinental routes. The Airbus A380 also offers similarly long-range capabilities. Combined with its larger passenger capacity, this enabled airlines to operate flights to some of the world's busiest hub airports, often serving routes where both double-deck aircraft could be spotted. Additionally, the A380 has been widely used on high-demand long-haul routes, further demonstrating its comparable flexibility in helping airlines optimize their fleets. When it comes to long-haul performance, the Airbus A35900 leads the pack with a maximum range of 15,000 kilometers. Close behind is the Airbus A380800, capable of flying up to 14,800 kilometers. Boeing's long-range options include the 777-300ER and the 7478, both with ranges around 13,650 kilometers. While the older 747-400 falls just slightly shorter at 13,570 kilometers. While it's true that during the production years of the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747, airlines had more seating capacity than ever before, boldly responding to the surge in passenger demand, their massive size eventually became a liability. This was especially evident during the pandemic when global air travel demand plummeted to record lows. However, with both Airbus and Boeing struggling to deliver new aircraft on time, including twin-aisle jets, and Boeing continuing to delay the 777X, airlines have had little choice. To cope with the renewed travel demand, they've been forced to bring the A380 back into service to meet capacity requirements. 
Despite a recent decline in market demand for the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 due to economic inefficiency, both aircraft types are still being actively operated on select high-demand routes. They are primarily being used to meet the surging demand for air travel on key long-haul corridors. According to aviation analytics firm Sirium, in October, 10 airlines scheduled 1,919 weekly flights using either the A380 or the 7478. Only two airlines, Korean Air and Lufthansa, were operating both types. For comparison, airlines had scheduled 1,803 such flights in the same month the year before, clearly showing that carriers still rely on the capacity these double-deckers provide, especially amid growing delivery delays. While they are still flying today in reduced numbers, it's inevitable that in a few years, both the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 will be fully retired from commercial fleets as a new generation of aircraft takes over. Even as the era of these passenger-carrying giants comes to an end, their legacy extends far beyond their massive size. In the case of the Boeing 747, the aircraft also found great success as a freighter. Just as its large passenger capacity was a win for airlines, its vast cargo hold and iconic nose-loading capability made it a workhorse for cargo carriers around the world. Beyond cargo, the 747 even served as a launch pad for rockets, famously operating as Cosmic Girl for Virgin Orbit. Meanwhile, although the Airbus A380 freighter program never took off, the Super Jumbo has found value in other roles. For instance, Airbus now uses it as a platform to test its hydrogen combustion technology under the Zero-E program, part of the company's mission to explore zero-emission solutions for future commercial aviation. Aside from crucial factors like safety, cost remains one of the most important elements in aviation decision-making. After all, Airlines are businesses that need to generate revenue while minimizing expenses in order to thrive. For large fleet operators, even a small difference in aircraft costs can have major consequences. In recent years, as the Airbus A340 has become increasingly rare, airlines looking to operate four-engine wide bodies were left with two choices, the double-deck Airbus A380 or the iconic humpbacked Boeing 747. Naturally, many factors influence this decision, and some airlines have flown both types, but as always, cost plays a defining role. Let's take a closer look at the key numbers. While the legacies of the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 remain firmly cemented in aviation history, their commercial journeys have effectively come to an end. Neither aircraft is in production anymore, marking the close of an era defined by size, power, and capacity. The COVID-19 pandemic only accelerated this shift, reinforcing a growing industry preference for more fuel-efficient twin-engine widebodies on long-haul routes. As airlines seek to streamline operations and reduce costs, the massive four-engine giants have largely fallen out of favor in fleet planning. Still, before diving into how these aircraft have been valued on the second-hand market, and how their roles have evolved in a post-production world, it's helpful to revisit how they were priced when new. Although list prices rarely reflect the actual costs airlines pay due to discounts and negotiations, they offer a useful benchmark to understand the scale of investment required to operate these engineering titans. Airbus produced only one passenger variant of the A380, the A380-800, a double-decker designed to carry hundreds of passengers across the globe in luxury, often priced at over $445 million. Boeing, meanwhile, developed multiple versions of the 747 over five decades, with the latest and closest rival to the A380 being the 7478 Intercontinental, carrying a list price of around $418 million. But how much were airlines actually paying for these jets? As mentioned earlier, the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 are no longer in commercial production. In fact, the final Boeing 747-8 freighter was delivered to Atlas Air more than a year after Airbus handed over its last A380 to Emirates, 
with the delivery ceremony taking place at Airbus's Hamburg facility in December 2021. Meanwhile, Korean Air received the last passenger Boeing 747-8 in July 2017. As a result, any airline wishing to acquire a Boeing 747 or Airbus A380 in 2025 must do so through the used aircraft market. For the A380, this was once considered a dead end, especially amid the COVID-19 pandemic. However, in recent years, the secondary market value of these quadjets has seen a resurgence with startup carrier Global Airlines planning to launch operations using secondhand super jumbos. According to fleet data from CH Aviation, the highest market values for Airbus A380s currently belong to UAE flag carrier Emirates. Based in Dubai, the airline is the world's largest A380 operator with a total of 118 units, with an average age of 10.6 years. Historically, five more aircraft have served Emirates as well. Among these 118 aircraft, five A380s, registered A6EVO through A6EVS, currently hold the highest market value of the type. All under five years old, they are valued at $69.58 million each, with a monthly lease rate of $625,000. Outside of Emirates, ANA's JA383A is the next most valuable A380, estimated at $63.04 million. At the lower end of the spectrum, some aircraft are valued as low as $22.78 million. Several notable Airbus A380s are currently held in storage, though they remain valuable assets. Among them is Emirates A6EDC, which is presently stored despite the airline's large active A380 fleet. Qantas also has three significant aircraft in this category. VHOQA and VHOQB are still in active service, while VHOQC is currently in storage. Meanwhile, Highfly Malta's 9HMIP, also stored for now, is expected to return to the skies under global airlines in the near future. When it comes to the Boeing 747 family, the most valuable aircraft today are the 747-8F freighters, as these jets are significantly newer than their passenger counterparts. Unsurprisingly, the youngest unit, Atlas Air's 2.3-year-old N863GT, is currently valued at $165.7 million, with a lease rate of $1.7 million. Since the Airbus A380 was never developed as a dedicated freighter, a more apt comparison would be with the 7478 Intercontinental Passenger Jets, its closest competitor in both performance and production era. According to Teach Aviation, the highest current market values for 7478 passenger variants belong to Korean Air's two youngest aircraft, HL7642 and HL7644, each worth $50.21 million with a lease rate of $500,000. These figures indicate that the youngest A380s are generally more valuable than the youngest 7478s, likely due in part to age differences between the fleets. At the lower end of the 7478 value scale, Lufthansa's 13-year-old DABYA is currently valued at $40.89 million. This is still considerably higher than the cheapest A380, which may again be attributed to the age gap. Notably, A380 passenger production began before the 7478 and concluded several years after Boeing's final jumbo jet left the assembly line, with the American manufacturer focusing primarily on freighter variants in later years. In some airlines, the A380 has operated alongside the older 747-400 variant. The most valuable example of this version is Lufthansa's 23-year-old DABTL, currently valued at $12.04 million. With the intense rivalry between Airbus and Boeing, it can sometimes be difficult to objectively compare the costs of operating the A380 and the 747-8 using only publicly available data. Indeed, Liham News pointed out that Boeing claimed the 7478 had double-digit lower costs, which Airbus angrily responded to, saying Boeing, without exaggeration, was lying. The publication added that more objective data comes from airlines that operate both aircraft types themselves, 
particularly in cases where carriers fly both models concurrently. On fuel consumption, Liam News reported that, according to Lufthansa, the A380 consumes 3.4 liters per 100 passenger kilometers, slightly outperforming the 7478's 3.5 liters. In any case, while the cost differences between the A380 and the 747 are generally marginal, the actual figures themselves are always substantial. As the skies shift towards smaller, more efficient aircraft, the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747 quietly step back, leaving behind a legacy of ambition, scale, and engineering brilliance. Their time may be ending, but their impact on global aviation will be felt for decades to come.